Throughout my two years of college, I've been preparing to apply to medical school by shadowing, interning, and volunteering. For the past several months, I've had the privilege of shadowing Dr. Jennifer Woodard, an emergency medicine physician practicing here in rural Appalachia. I've gotten to follow her around as she serves patients of diverse backgrounds and observe her as she takes each step into understanding and caring for her patients. Opportunities like this have given me a unique perspective on medicine and patient care. I have gotten to see firsthand some of the issues that arise while seeking medical care in rural Africa. This year's theme is beyond. To me, beyond means going above expectations. Beyond means looking past the norm to find ways to improve and grow. Going beyond in healthcare ensures that people of all socioeconomic backgrounds, educations, races, religions, and ethnicities receive the same consideration and respect for their differences. How can we go beyond to serve patients of diverse backgrounds? How can we raise the bar and set a new precedent for medicine starting right here in rural Appalachia? Dr. Woodard has explained to me that oftentimes in this region, some of the biggest challenges to healthcare arise before the diagnosis is even made. Many patients face challenges finding times that align with their busy work schedule to make an appointment with the doctor. When the appointment is finally made, many patients have transportation issues and find it a challenge arriving at the office. After overcoming those obstacles, some patients do not speak English and are at a disadvantage while in the office. I will be focusing today on the ways to go beyond for patients and medical care that are most significant in rural Appalachia, including conflicting work schedules, transportation issues, and language barriers. To begin, rural Appalachia has a lot of blue collar workers who work nine to five work schedules. This poses an issue as many doctor's offices have similar hours and it is a challenge taking time off of work. Dr. Woodard has told me that many blue collar workers such as farmers, electricians, and mechanics do not have the luxury of taking a vacation day to seek routine or emergency medical care. Quad A is a nonprofit physician led and founded global accreditation organization that focuses on improving healthcare around the world. In a 2019 study, Quad A explains that in order for rural residents to receive sufficient access, quality health care must be made obtainable in a timely manner. When I was shadowing in the emergency room, a farmer came in experiencing cardiac issues. He needed to stay the night in the hospital and receive a stress test procedure the following day. However, it was getting close to dinner time and he needed to get home to milk his cows. This patient was an older man who did not have any workers or family members to take care of the milking for him. And if he was to miss even one milking, the cow's udders would be swollen and in pain. Dr. Woodard told me that this is a common occurrence when farmers are seeking medical care. It is often impossible for them to step away from the farm for a long period of time. Possible solutions to this work schedule issue include the addition of evening care one to two nights per week or weekend care. Physicians could take turns working an extra night or a Saturday each week. This would allow those who work strict nine to five schedules or any other non-flexible schedule to obtain necessary medical care without losing out on part of a paycheck. Additionally, many rural Appalachian residents have low income and this brings rise to transportation issues. Patients who do not have access to a car or who live far from a hospital face more challenges when seeking medical care. The American Hospital Association states that 3.9 million people in the United States do not obtain necessary medical care due to transportation issues. In a 2020 study entitled Predictors to Access of Healthcare, Author Susan L. Wilson explains that access to a car for medical care or work is essential to independence in rural areas. Another time when I was shadowing in the emergency room, a patient came in who had been experiencing excruciating pain for a long period of time. This patient had waited several weeks to be seen by a doctor because she was not able to drive due to her age. After lots of testing and screening was done, it was found that this patient had lung cancer, which had gotten worse each day she waited to be seen by a doctor. 
Also, since she was unaware of the cancer, she continued her routine daily smoking, making her condition even worse. The farther along that cancer gets, the harder it is to treat as it is more likely to have spread to more parts of the body. This leads to harsher treatments such as chemotherapy and also lower chances for recovery. Had the cancer been caught at an earlier stage, this patient may have only needed surgery to remove the affected piece of the lung. Possible ways to bridge this gap of transportation issues include the addition of virtual care, implementing telehealth office visits, Zoom appointments, and in-home health care could help those who cannot travel receive medical care. Additionally, tutorial videos and online assistance could be offered for those who struggle with technology use. Physicians and patients could be in direct contact through computers, phones, and tablets and receive answers much quicker. As a result, healthcare issues could be caught and treated much more quicker and more efficiently. Lastly, rural Appalachia also struggles with language barriers as many people are not fluent in English or also may not have the medical education level necessary to understand the conversation between the healthcare system, medical information, and their health issues. In a 2022 study entitled Implications of Language Barriers in Healthcare, author Hal Al Shamsi claims that language barriers lead to miscommunication between the medical professional and the patient, significantly reducing both parties' satisfaction and also decreasing the quality of care and patient safety. Several studies have shown that patients who experience language barriers receive much poorer health outcomes than those who speak the local language. When my brother and I were volunteering at a local remote area medical clinic, a patient who only spoke Spanish was in need of a full mouth extraction. The dentist was finding it challenging communicating to her the urgency of this treatment due to the language barrier. However, my brother and I were able to put together a few words from our high school Spanish classes to explain to her the deadly consequences of an infection reaching the bloodstream and eventually reaching the heart. Physicians and other medical professionals must be compassionate and must be willing to take the extra step and effort that my brother and I did that day. Possible ways to bridge the gap of language barriers include hiring more medical translators and also offering written materials in multiple languages. Physicians could be enrolled in language courses to keep up with medical terminology and simple conversational terms. Additionally, the study previously mentioned by Shamsi also suggests the use of an app called Medibabble. Using advo advanced voice recognition software, this app offers thousands of medical translations and also the questions for a standard medical history. These translational tools could help set a new precedent and help fix part of the language barrier. Rural Appalachia is home to a diverse population. Patients in this area often experience challenges with conflicting work schedules, transportation issues, and language barriers. The implementation of evening and weekend care, virtual and in-home health care, and translational tools could help set a new precedent for medicine starting in rural Appalachia. We must take into consideration our patients and the medical issues that are most prevalent in our area when treating and caring for patients in rural Appalachia. Thank you.